tene ta tambo ngadu dele kyo ge la tene ti jiso do jin chung tum so nde nde be ka sala za la maton ji pe la maton ji la te pa tum no ru ji ni so ha ta na ru ji First of all, I'd like to wish everyone good morning. And then after that, as we recite the short Vajradhara lineage prayer, please pray with great faith and devotion in the root and lineage lamas. <laughs>
perfumed with scented water and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. Imagining this as the Buddha realm, I offer it so that all beings may enjoy that pure realm. In accordance with the capabilities and the diverse aspirations of sentient beings, I ask you to turn the wheel of the Dharma of the greater, lesser, and conventional vehicles. Thanks. Dene, ta kasing ketu le, ta tanda jitang kasing ke kapsul la hudu te la, dene mundro tang uye tang jiti nambasom yore. สมัครเดล่ะทีนี้ที่นั่นเนี่ยทั้งพวกเราทีนี้ทุ่มงกันรถทุ่มมาอินบาลล้อมได้เชื่อจึงกันรถนี่เลยถ้าทั้งพวก
Tinite Lodu number he bought the cup under Duba under what is in the cup under Tangus, a cup swan, a moose, masonate. Rete Yenaya, that take rank on the Siena, be calchimbore. Tinne calchimbo in Bijun Sente and Tango, that Tanjur Nieparka and Raboja Yena. Tinning Aranso, be Calvazambuchum, la Tinning Calvazambuchum, a day, a tani, Trula, Majorwa, a calcia, a day, la Tinny teacher, na, a tene, Tumonk, Nundro, ye, nani, Tango, Tanjur, Nibercavari. To pick up where we left off yesterday, yesterday, as we discussed, there are the three main sections of this text, the preliminary steps of mind training, the main practice of pointing out, and the subsequent application combining the profound advice into key points. And so, of these, the first of them, the first of these is in two parts, the general preliminaries and the special preliminaries, which represent the unique qualities of this particular path. And so we have these two different sections to the preliminaries, and of them, the first one, although it is not directly said in the text, also has two different sections. These two different sections are the common preliminaries of the four thoughts that turn the mind. And then following that, there are the, special, uh, there are the preliminaries of uh, going for refuge and arousing bodhicitta and so forth. And so here, the, uh, it's a very brief presentation of the four thoughts that turn the mind. They are uh, not actually taught, um, uh, but although uh, they, um, uh, so they, they are rather hidden in this text. They're not actually taught. But in terms of these instructions, they're actually extremely important. Uh, and the reason that they are, and, and because they are so extremely important, then we have to realize, we have to think about them. And so the first of them is that we have a precious human body that is so difficult to find. And uh, we are very fortunate to have this precious human body that is uh, so hard, uh, so difficult to find. And it's something that we should not waste. And we must know that we should not let it go to waste. And if we, it is important that we know that. And so this is the first of the four common preliminaries, the four thoughts that turn the mind. The first of these being the precious human body. Tene Tatea Chitang Tanjurini Prakawa Hipato Maimba Tene Tandang Aransu Hip to Song Tana B. Calva Sambo Jung you are la Tene Tea Chitang on the Siena Tene Kembo Kankarte Tatang Saku 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 Kula Tene Saja Chembo Maimba Tat in the La Chembe to talk to Rilla. Tinny conkey, don't want the soon at Rilla. Tinny conkey, don't want the soon at the chit number muso. Don't want the tan chit number lomaso, carbatan temperature, you your body. Be a tankaru hip to song to my own music under which day. Tasa and ta rimbo, rimbo, tinny la conkey, don't want the soon at Rilla. Tini <laughs> Naranzo, that American Mechira, Benjam Boyapore, Tinipeg Laman him, but it's on Desitella Tonu Siena, Camp Hanger, some under way, Jessigrel. Tinde Machiba, Tine Tati, ah, Ticalcium Putua, Tidomot, be paint to put Yosa Reva, some Debaji to Bate, attack, be to Momaimba, Tinipurni, Kimbo Conquer. Saku Lungu Dini, Jenny, Kashuji, Sunju Yaba, Teach you the America, Pebju Yaba, America Lomatsu, Tela Tono, Seju Yaba, Jenny, Tela, Pento Junju Yaba, the Bay, Takala Sampa, whatever. Saku 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 
it's not just that we have a precious human body. If we really think about this, really, if we examine it closely, then we're actually extremely fortunate to do this. Because actually, in general, Kempo Gangshar is someone who came from this really tiny, tiny little region of Tibet. Not a very big place at all, a really small place. And he's just this one uh, great meditator who uh, was there. And it was in this little tiny, tiny place that he taught these instructions. And then for you all to have the fortune to be able to actually encounter these instructions, it's, it's like it's impossible that this was going to happen. I mean, it's from a place that was far, far away, in a land a long way away. And he gave these instructions in that place far away. And then gradually these instructions spread a little bit. They're translated into uh, English, as you can see. And so in that way, you have the uh, fortune to do this. But even though you have the fortune to be able to actually read the instructions, you know, there's no given that you're going to see that as. You might think, ah, oh, it's just some old Lama in Tibet, and he's just saying these <laughs> instructions. You know, uh, what good is practicing this going to do? You know, what do I need to follow these instructions for? I don't have to have any interest in that at all. And so you might think, I'm from America. <laughs> I'm really smart. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really sharp. I don't need this old Tibetan guy's instructions at all. <laughs> so it's possible that you might think that way. <laughs> but that's not what happened. <laughs> at least I hope not. <laughs> that's not what happened. You thought, oh, these are important. This is something that's really important. And if I study these and really put them into practice, this is something that's going to be beneficial for me. And so you have this faith in that. And so this is, you know, this is really not a very common thing to happen. It's a very rare thing to happen. And so, you know, there is Kembo Gangshar who appeared in this one small region of Tibet. And he gave those instructions. And those instructions were brought over here. They are translated into in English. And now here you are taking uh, interest in them. And these are something that can really help you. Uh, and so really this is an incredibly good fortune. <laughs> え、カルバサンプチュンワテ、タンジュルニプカワシタテ、ニプカワテ、ニ、ニニチュドンテ、チュダンテネタテラ、チュラテパトムグググギワレラテ、テパトムグチェトパテ、ペカルバサンプイン
And so in this way, we have encountered the Dharma, we have encountered these instructions, and it, we are really fortunate to be able to do this. And so this is the precious human body that is difficult to find. We have found what is difficult to find. We have encountered the Dharma. And when we encounter the Dharma, in order to practice it, we need to have faith and devotion. Uh, we need to develop those. And to be able to develop that faith and devotion is really extremely unfortunate. It was really extremely fortunate, excuse me. <laughs> and so, uh, of the four different thoughts that turn the mind, this is the first of them, the uh, precious human body. And the second is on impermanence. And um, here we uh, are in a position where all of the favorable conditions for us to practice Dharma have come together. And now, at the time that we have these fa favorable uh, conditions, we need to put them into practice in order to bring ourselves um, a good result. And so this is meditating upon imp impermanence, realizing that we need to make use of the favorable conditions that we have now. Following this, the third of the four thoughts that turn the mind is the contemplation on karma, cause, and effect. Now, karma, cause, and effect are described in great detail below, and so I think it's probably okay not to uh, give any great uh, explanation of them right now. And so the, th the fourth of the four thoughts that turns the mind is the meditation on the defects of samsara. And these are the meditation on the sufferings of birth, aging, sickness, and death. And so, in general, in our human life, we have a lot of difficulties. We have a lot of problems and obstacles that arise for, uh, for us. And a lot of people, most ordinary people, when they think about it, they think, oh man, I'm just having some hard luck. This isn't turning out well for me. You know, they just sort of think about it in this way. It's, you know, oh, this is really not so good for me. It's what most ordinary people think about it. But actually, it's not that. That's not what it is. Rather, this is the, the nature of how samsara is. Uh, and so in order to free ourselves from that, we need to uh, practice, uh, do our meditation practice. And we need to uh, practice samadhi uh, meditation. And, and so in this way, we have the four thoughts that turn the mind, the contemplation on the precious human body, the contemplation on impermanence, the contemplation on uh, karma, cause, and effect, and the contemplation on uh, the defects of samsara. And these four are the four ordinary, uh, uh, the four ordinary preliminary practices. Then, that he Jesus did not need somebody to tell him to number one, somebody to tell him to number one, somebody to ตาจิตังเกงารันโซเทนิจิตังเกเทนิตองไปชูจุกโกละ <laughs> ตินิเตจีสุนโจตินิตาตินเดนังเกตินเดยุงเกยอติกุเกยอเรลาตินิเตญอมสลัมบะเสปะลาตันดางารันโซชอนลินลากาเรนังเกยอเรเซนาติน
But even if you have the wish to enter the gate of the Dharma, there is the danger that the Dharma that you request might actually not be the real Dharma. Uh, so in order to protect ourselves, the way to protect ourselves from that danger that the Dharma is uh, the incorrect Dharma, we go for refuge in the three precious jewels, the jewel of the Buddha, the jewel of the Dharma, and the jewel of the Sangha. We go for refuge in them when we follow them. That is what we need to do. And in order to do this practice, well, what is it that we need to do? Well, we do prostrations. And now, why do we do prostrations? Um, we do prostrations with our body. We uh, recite the, uh, with our speech, we recite the words of going for refuge. And with our minds, we supplicate. And in doing this, we then do 100,000 of these. And the reason for doing 100,000 of these is so that, uh, we can, um, so that we can make sure that we go down the right path. This is the difference between this path and an incorrect path. Tene ที่นั้นเนี่ยที่นี่เส้นจีนทำจีนละเพนเบกก็คงที่ที่นี่จะมันจงอันดับไปเจอที่ที่กัลเชียวเลยที่นี่ร้านนี้จีบุกสมุท
All sentient beings want to be free of suffering, so we need to bring them to happiness. We need to free them from uh, suffering. And the power uh, to be able to do that is dependent upon the Dharma. It is from the Dharma that we get this. And so we study the Dharma. We practice the Dharma. And what is the reason that we study and practice the Dharma? The reason is that uh, we want to be able to attain the ultimate result and be able to bring benefit to all sentient beings. We need to be able to actually bring benefit to uh, all sentient beings. Uh, and so we need to have this sort of vast, uh, vast intention, this vast mind. We need to generate the vast mind of enlightenment, and it is very important to do this. If we have a limited motivation, then the results that we attain will also be limited. But if we have a vast motivation, then the results that we attain will be vast. Um, and so for that reason, when we first embark upon the path, it is very important that we uh, arouse bodhicitta, which raises you above the inferior path. And so here, this is arousing bodhicitta, the precious mind of enlightenment, which is the second of the five preliminaries. ดิดิจงซิโดจิเซนเบกอมเตสุงเกยอะเรลาทินิตาเตลางารันซุเกนุนโรเยนัมเบเยซอเปกับลาญิปะเตโดจิเซนเบกอมเตทาซิมจิเ
The third of the preliminaries is the meditation and, and recitation of Vajrasattva, which purifies misdeeds, obscurations, and adverse conditions that prevent the essence of refuge in bodhicitta from dawning in your being. And so there, when we do the four uh, preliminary practices, the four special preliminary practices, the second of these is Vajrasattva. When we're counting it as four, that means that the bodhicitta is included within the refuge and, prost uh, refuge and prostrations. And so that means that the second of the four um, uh, uh, special preliminaries is this meditation on Vajrasattva. Now, what is the reason for doing the meditation on Vajrasattva? Well, we have many adverse conditions. And so uh, when we want to generate relative bodhicitta, when we want to generate uh, ultimate um, bodhicitta, often we have difficulties. There are obstacles that block us from doing it. And so what are the uh, obstacles that uh, can block us from developing bodhicitta? The obstacles are often uh, karma, bad karma that we have accumulated in um, uh, previous lives. That is the bad actions we have done in previous lives. And these are what we call misdeeds. Uh, uh, and then there are also the uh, tendencies, the habitual tendencies of, of having strong afflictions or strong disturbing emotions, of having a lot of coarse thoughts. And these are what we call the obscurations. And so in this way we have the misdeeds and the obscurations. And these are something that we need to purify. Uh, and we need to uh, cleanse ourselves of all these base uh, thoughts. And in order to uh, cleanse ourselves of these base thoughts, when we are doing a practice such as tranquility or shamatha meditation, when we're doing tranquility meditation, then uh, sometimes it goes fine, but sometimes we have the problems of a lot of faults coming up. We, our mind won't rest where it is. It doesn't, our, uh, it's not clear. Uh, there are a lot of thoughts and we aren't really able to develop really good tranquility meditation. Now what we need to do in those, uh, and, and these are the adverse conditions, this being unable to stay, this is the adverse conditions. And what we can do, if we want to take, tackle it directly, what we do is we apply mindfulness, awareness, and carefulness. We look to see if we have any agitation or dullness. We apply the remedies for those. We look to see if there are a lot of thoughts in our mind. We apply the remedies for those. And there are many methods for doing this. These are methods for doing it directly. But sometimes you want to do it indirectly, not directly. And when you want to do it indirectly, then you do the meditation on Vajrasattva. Uh, and so first, the reason we do this is because at first we have a lot of habitual tendencies from previous lives. And uh, because of those habitual tendencies, they present, uh, prevent us from being able to uh, do the shamatha meditation. And so if we do the meditation, we can purify them, and then, that will be, uh, then we'll be able to have a result of good tranquility meditation. Uh, and so in that way, we do this meditation, uh, Vajrasattva, which purifies misdeeds and obscurations in order that we can have good shamatha, good tranquility meditation. We also do it uh, uh, when we have the practice, Some, uh, when, we do the, when we do the practices of the creation phase, that is the practices of visualizing deities, the practices of the creation stage. When we do the practices of the uh, uh, creation stages, sometimes everything is really clear and great, but sometimes it just ain't. Sometimes it isn't so clear and uh, so we have trouble seeing clearly and our mind won't stay. And that is the adverse to condition. Those are the difficulties that we have. And now the main method for getting rid of that, for dispelling that is our own diligence. But that's like the cause. And so when you have both a cause and a conditions, the condition uh, here is doing the practice of Vajrasattva, which uh, purifies our uh, which purifies our tendencies, purifies our latent tendencies. Uh, and so in this case, if we do the practice of Vajrasattva meditation, it will bring uh, benefit to us in our practices of the visualization stage. 
Uh, and so in this way, when we do the tranquility meditation, when we do the creation stage meditations, it's beneficial. And it is also beneficial when we do our insight meditation. Sometimes when you do insight meditation, it's really clear and great, but sometimes it ain't. And so when it isn't clear, when it's not so clear, we don't really, or it's not very stable, then many people ask me, what should I do at this point? And one thing that you can do is that if you do this meditation on Vajrasattva, which purifies the misdeeds and obscurations, then this will really be very beneficial for this. So this is the reason for doing the uh, meditation on Vajrasattva, which purifies the misdeeds and obscurations. Tene tatheta doji sempe gam di nam kaps laya tachitang on the sena didip jongi sempe ke mi pasi ke dia la tene tera tetsam main ba uni ngarang ke nyamling ke kaps la jen dende yung kuntu dege jen di pang pe ke cetu yin sempe tene tat doji sempe kulule dats bab ne tang ngarang ke lula yepe luji nang tu yepe dipa あ、パチタンチェンイン天祖で、チェンインで、トップキチェットイン、チェンインで、てね、タドジセンビシャナラテンサルグ、サンバタブシエナ、ミシャルゲタテラペント、ヨンギヨアレラ、てね、ティチェ
adverse conditions and then there are the favorable, or here it's translated as harmonious. There are the favorable uh, conditions. And um, if, if you've purified all the adverse conditions but you haven't developed the favorable conditions, then things won't go so well. And so we need to develop the favorable conditions. And the favorable conditions are the accumulation of merit. Accumula uh, if we have the support of a gr vast accumulation of merit, then we will really be able to develop really good realization within our beings. Our meditation will go very well. We won't have any uh, difficulties. If we are doing the visualization practices of the creation stage, stage then those will, uh, we will have very clear appearance doing that and our uh, practice will go, without, uh, go well without any uh, difficulty. And so that is why we do the practice of accumul accumulating merit by making mandala offerings. So we need to ac accumulate merit. And when we do this accumulation of merit, we aren't doing it by taking other things, by actually taking other things and offering. Rather, we are doing this by making a vast offering with our mind. This is having a vast mental motivation. And we think that we are taking all of the wealth, all of the prosperity, everything in the world, and we are making it, uh, we're making an offering of it to all of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And if we do this, then we will be able to accumulate vast amounts of merit. And so this is the uh, fourth of the preliminary practices, the mandala offering, which is the method for gathering the accumulations, the harmonious conditions. Tinitangaranzoge, <laughs> Jilla <laughs> Mugu Jamro, Tene Doji Simbigam de Mandal, Lamanandurte, Tenum Trim Chetangan to Sone, Tacheta, Tijundo, Tati, Yibote, Namlinanjit, Kalchevare. The last of the, of the preliminaries is the Guru Yoga, the root of blessings and the means by which the special qualities of experience and realization quickly arise in your being. And so we need to uh, develop in our beings, we need to develop our Dharma practice, we need to develop our, um, our Samadhi meditation, we need to develop uh, the uh, uh, creation stage of the deities and the, and the completion stages. We need those and when we uh, and when we do them, we need to develop realization. We need to develop re experience and realization. Now, the main method for doing this is to be diligent. It is to have pure perception. It is to develop devotion. But if we aren't going to be doing it directly, but rather we want a more indirect method of doing this, then we uh, do the practice of praying to the gurus uh, and praying to the root and line, uh, uh, lineage gurus. Uh, and uh, when we do that, then, um, and, and, we do the, and in order to do that, we do the practice of guru yoga. And when we do the practice of guru yoga, we develop devotion in our beings. And when we develop devotion, now, 
how is it that devotion is? What is this devotion? Well, this is the first we um, are able to develop samadhi meditation. When we develop that, then we will be able to practice. And then through the practice, we have faith in uh, faith and devotion and all that. And because of that faith and devotion, then we will be more diligent. Because we are more diligent, then we will be better able to receive the blessings. And because of uh, uh, receiving the blessings better, then it will be easier for us to develop true experience and realization within our beings. And so this is the fourth of the... Uh, four special preliminaries. The first of them is the refuge and bodhicitta, the two counted together. Then there is the second, which is vajrasattva. The third is the mandala practice, and the fourth is guru yoga. And so we need to practice these in the uh, in the normal way. It says here, uh, these are the. Um, It's not quite clear in the English here. Um, it's, it says that we need to practice these according to the a general way of practicing them in the Tibetan text. So we need to practice these in according to the general way of practicing them. What that means is that we uh, need to practice them continually. We need to practice them regularly. Uh, and it is very important to practice them in that way. え、中で Kepa sinking the candle cog you are the sinner, Kepa, a shirap tan, then be gone, Tachi, Sini, Tinni, Taji Bog, shirap, Tachi, Sini, Candy do, Tawatella, Tinni Jagum, Segi, or Pendata, Jagum, Sina, Tinni Kusula in Jogum, Sina, Kusula, sinking the candy jilla cog you are the sinner, Chitanga, Ta, Tap Devo, and the Tabdevo so those were the uh, general preliminaries, and following this come these special preliminaries, which according to this system of teachings are called the analytic meditation of Appendita. And so in terms of this set of instructions, there are two parts to the set of instructions, and these two parts are the analytic meditation of Appendita and the resting meditation of a kusulu. These are the two parts. The analytic meditation of a pandita and the resting meditation of a kusulu. And of these two different parts, the first is the analytic meditation of a pandita. Now when we say pandita in Sanskrit, that is a word that, it's a Sanskrit word. If we say it in Tibetan, it's called kepa. If we say it in English, it is called a scholar, or you could say a pundit. That's the um, English cognate, or the English derivative of it, pandit. Um, so, so it's a pandita. Now, what do we say when we mean a pundit, or when we say a scholar? Well, we meet someone who is really intelligent, someone with a lot of uh, discernment, or full knowing, and someone who uh, has a really uh, strong discernment in terms of uh, the uh, inference, and so he has a great inferential uh, full knowing. And because of having this great capacity for inference, they are able to really analyze things. And they look at, at, look at things and analyze what are they like. And so this is the analytic meditation of the Pandita. 
Then there is also the resting meditation of the kusalu. And what do we mean when we say the resting meditation of a kusalu? When we talk about a kusalu, or you could say just a yogi, a kusalu, it's a Sanskrit word, and it means just someone who just takes it easy and who doesn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about anything. He just sort of sits there and gets right down to the meditation. And so that's what we mean by the kusalu. Someone uh, who uh, doesn't make things difficult, who just uh, doesn't think about things too much, but just rests meditating on it then. So that's the resting meditation of the kusala, uh, meditation where there aren't all that many thoughts, and you just look directly at the nature of the mind. And so here we have the resting meditation, uh, we have the analytic meditation of the Pandita, and we have the resting meditation of the Kusulu. And of these two, the analytic meditation of the Pandita is presented here as the preliminary. <laughs> Le la tini tiyan ta jitang wang tu xie na ta tan da le jun de ti ti zong xi ba ta mang bu ge ma song wan ta bu de la tini tiyan hu ma nga lo zha wa ji ge song cha de xi ni ma tini pe na chu xie pe ka so la chu ma ran chu rei ma da wa song xi ai wa de ジャンバタニジーコラヒエグレス。ジャンバタニジーコラヒエナテハジャンクトモマインビチュンダボマレ。チュルソイナヤテヒエグレ。ティチタンダボジェレ。ティハジャンカルチョヨマレス。ティニ
there are a couple of different types, of, there are several different types of dharma. Uh, and so the first type of dharma that you can talk about is talking about love and compassion. And if you talk about love and compassion, everyone likes it. It's uh, really good, but it's not all that particular to Buddhism. I mean, all religions talk about love and compassion. So because it's that way, oh, there's really no need to talk about love and compassion all that much. The um, second thing that you can talk about, another thing that you can talk about is you can talk about karma. And if you talk about karma, people get really unhappy. <laughs> they don't like it at all. And since they don't like it at all, they don't listen. And so they, they say, oh, they don't like it. And so it's better not to talk about karma, is what he said. And the third thing you can talk about is wisdom. And so wisdom is really important. It's best to talk about wisdom. You should just talk about wisdom and forget about the others. <laughs> and so that's the advice he gave. And on one level, it's actually really good advice. But, <laughs> but whether or not karma, um, uh, whether or not karma is nice to listen to, or whether it's not nice to listen to, whether or not you're able to hear it, or whether you're not able to hear it, it's something that you got to know. <laughs> I'm someone. I'm a Dharma teacher. I'm a Lama. I have to explain the Dharma. It's my responsibility to tell you what the Dharma is, and I have to tell you what the Dharma really is. It's this is my responsibility, and so if I just uh, say. Oh, tell them what they like to hear. <laughs> oh, they'll enjoy this. This will be happy and, happy and pleasant. Then I wouldn't be fulfilling my responsibility. <laughs> so um, it's my responsibility, and I have to tell you about karma, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. <laughs> it's important that you got to hear it. <laughs> so, so I have to tell it to you, so I'm going to tell you a lot about karma in great detail. <laughs> Tene Tela Gojur Jitanta. Then the Shindu Gojur singing the Kandikur legendary Gordi, Shindu Gojur Tinita, Tela Hirog, Ribia, Dria Mepandabo, Tene Uso Tonya Mepandabo in the Chena, Tene Tinkawa and Dabore, Red the Yinaya Sanji jumped in the J, Sun Capsula, the legendary Gordi, Hibshin Hippa. That in the sun to tell la, the lela tene, devote, jungiova, that chitang, chisena, legend is in the calicapore, the yena, chisena, tangaranso, leka yapo, chisena, tell and devil yapo, jungiova. That's some bazambo, when the leka yapo, chisena, tell and devil yapo, jungiova. Tijin to some bangemba, good lega dubu, chisinati, mongbala, ranging kanga, la nepele, devo dubu, chiungi orella, tatela to le jundi, segi oremato, hachang, te kangal jinji, marilla, tini tela ya, tini devo te kandi yungi orisena, tini ta, no adjunting jin devota, a sepa adjunting jin devosi. ตาจุนทินจินเดบซุงกิยอเรลาทีนี้เตยาญวาจุนทินจินเดบเซนซงนาทางอารังกิยันตอเตลเนปะจัลดุปุตังทินเดเซนะซัมบายงเมบากุโ
Tell a juju tani, Naran Samba Nimba Ningimendu, Samba Zambu Gugudu, Son, Samba Zambusi, Kunun Samba Zambusi, Tela Tene, Lega Yaposina, Yan T. Jepa Juntin Devuti, Mount Palatini Samba Zambola Ganki, Lega Yabola Ganki, Tenipe, Yor 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 and Dog Yore, Tenisungi Yorella, Tati Susu, come he get any young Yorella, Tela Legend, Tingus and Naransu Samotani. Rang consul go on getting the young you are. When the Buddha taught the Dharma, he said that there are in general three different types of karma. There is, or there are three different types, excuse me, when the Buddha taught the Dharma, he taught that there are three different types of things that we can know. There are things that we can know directly. There are hidden things, and there are things that are extremely hidden. And so the, the evident things, the evident things are things that we can actually see. We can really see them, the things. Uh, and so these are the direct meaning, the things that we can actually directly see. Then there are the hidden things, and the hidden things are things that we can't see, but that we can figure out through inference. Uh, and so these are what we mean by hidden. And then there are the things that are extremely hidden. The extremely hidden things are like karma, things that we can't really prove by logic, things that we don't really see, things that are hard to uh, actually see and teach. Uh, they're, hard, they're difficult to teach, but the Buddha did actually spend a lot of time. When the Buddha taught the Dharma, he explained um, karma in great detail. And what he said is that when we do karma, when we do an action, karma just means action. When we do an action, then it brings a result. And maybe um, it's hard to see how that result uh, comes out of the karma. But actually, if we look at it, you know, what it says is that if we do a good action, if we perform good karma, then it will be bring, bring a good result. If we have a good motivation and we do a good thing, then this will bring us a good result. On the other hand, if we have an evil motivation or a bad motivation and we um, do something nasty, then that will bring us a bad result that will only bring harm to ourselves and others. And so, actually, if you think about it, it's not all that difficult. It's really not all that hard. Well, now, how is it that the results happen? Well, when you talk about karma, there are two different types of re, uh, results that you can experience through something. There are the compatible results of experience, and then there are the ca uh, compatible results of, of our deeds. Uh, and so the compatible results of our experience are when we do things, like we do something, we have a bad motivation. And we do, and we do something bad, and because we do something harmful, and because of that, then uh, a bad result happens as a result of that. Or on the other hand, you might have a good motivation, a kind motivation, and out of that kind motivation, then you do something that is good, something beneficial, and that brings a. <laughs> And that brings a good result. And so this is a, the a compatible experience, uh, a, a result that is, a, an ex, what did I say? A compatible experience, a result that is compatible, a compatible result that is experienced. A compatible result that is experienced. And so that is the first of these two different types of karma. The second type is the compatible result of doing, or the compatible, that's better than saying compatible result of deeds, isn't it? The compatible result of doing. And what this means is that when you do something bad, then you have a bad motivation and you do something bad, then you start habituating yourself to it. And so then in the future, it's easier to do that bad thing again. It's easier to have the bad motivation again. And if your motivation just gets worse and worse and worse, and your actions just get worse and worse and worse. And then at some point you think, oh, wait a minute. 
This ain't so good. Uh, I'm not going to do anything like this anymore. I don't want to do anything bad. I'm not going to let myself do anything bad. I want to do good things. I want to train myself to do good things. And you have a good motivation, a kind motivation. And as a result of that, you do something better. And you get used to doing good actions. And your actions just get better and better. And so here you have the compatible result of doing, of getting used to some things. And so. Um, uh, this is because of your uh, good motivation. And so maybe we think that, difficult, that karma is difficult to understand. But if you do good things and you get used to doing good things, then it just is easier and easier to do good things. It's like a habit. We all can see how these habits happen. So you do an act. It create, starts creating a habit. You get used to doing something. Uh, and uh, then uh, as a result of it, it just gets um, better and easier. And so we can really see that. Tinisomba Tinisomba ตันเกซอมเบกกุฮงซังยินตันตินเลกะเจตันเตซังยินยิกกอร์ลาตินตอจิเชนีตันเดบุตินจุงกิวาเรเดบุรังยินยิกาลาเพมบาตันรังยิน
And then the fourth alternative is that we have a black motivation and a black deed. And so that is where both the motivation and the deed are bad. Uh, and so if we look at karma in detail, then there are these four different ca categories. Now, of these four types of karmas, which are the karmas that we need? What is the karma that we need to do? Well, the best one to do is if we have the white motivation and the white deed. Uh, so that's the third type. It's important to have that. Uh, and if we can have that, then that is first rate. Uh, the second best is if we have a white motivation but do black deeds. <laughs> so the, the, the deed is not all that great, but you know the motivation was good. And so for that reason, the ones, the types of karma, the type of actions that we need are the, the first and the third. The, we need the white motivation and white deed or the white motivation and bad deed and black deed. Um, the second and fourth alternatives are things that we need to give up. Uh, when we have a bad motivation, but do, when we have a black motivation, but do a white deed, then this is something, because we have a bad motivation, it's something that's not going to bring a lot of uh, benefit. And we, it's very important that we know that doing, uh, that having a, that black motivation and black deeds, that is having a bad motivation and doing bad things, is something that should be uh, given up. If we know that that is something to, to give up, then that will be helpful for us. Uh, and so here, in this way, we can have a good or a bad motivation in our mind. We can have good or bad um, uh, good or bad result, uh, good or bad actions, and these will lead to the results. And if we have good motivation, good deeds, and this is something that will uh, bring uh, benefit to both ourselves and others. Or if we have a bad motivation, bad deeds, then it is something that will bring harm to ourselves and others. And so that is why it is said here that it is an unfailing fact that happiness results from virtuous action, and that suffering results from having committed unvirtuous karmic deeds. Uh, and so uh, here, this is something that is unfailing. And so if you look at how it is that we're habituated to action, Kembo Gongshir, looking at how the habituation works, said that, you know, this is how it really happens. And so we will leave it here this morning and do a little bit of meditation.
Oh. 